Hey everybody, welcome to Franny's Square, or maybe I should say Franny's Hair, because today we're gonna to be talking about this wig. Her name is Clarissa, and she's from Tressalore. So I've been on the hunt for a wig that looks like my hair used to look. And for the longest time, I've been wearing an A-line stacked bob. I love that cut. And I've had medium to dark brown roots with chunky gold highlights. So when I saw this wig, I got so excited. It really does look like the hair I used to have. If you go back to my early crochet videos and take a look at my hair, you'll see what I mean. So I thought what I would do is I will go over first what it looks like on. I'll show you the 360. Then we'll talk about the color, the cap construction, the way I put it on based on how the cap is constructed, and then maybe some styling ideas. All right, so let's get started. First, like I said, this is an A-line stacked bob. So here's the front, you can see that. If I turn to my left, you can see the A-line. And then in the back, it's stacked right here. And here's the right and the front. It has about a five inch bang, which you can see there. My measurement from my hairline to my chin is eight and a half inches. The crown is 6.75 inches and the nape is two inches and it weighs just 2.8 ounces. So it's very light. It is fairly dense. If you look at this, this is not a low density wig and I have um, two lower density wigs. One I got in this cut, which is much lower density and I'll be reviewing that as well and it's called Sunset. But this one definitely has at least a medium density and I do like it because it gives me the look of a lot of hair. As far as the color goes, this is called Mocha Gold. And you can see it has a lot of medium brown with chunky gold highlights through it. And I would definitely say this gives off a warm vibe versus a cool ashy vibe. There may be some ashy bits in the brown, but the gold highlights really give it a warm vibe. Okay, so I quickly just wanted to give you a look at the color out in the sunlight. So you can see the beautiful highlights. I think it looks so natural. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off and we're gonna talk about the cap construction. Okay, so here's the cap. Now, you'll notice up front, there is not a lace front. It's just a regular cap in the front. And I'm not sure what this material is, if it's a silicone or some kind of rubbery material that I think helps it stay in place. Then it has a monofilament top. And what that does is it allows you to part your hair anywhere in this area and have it look like a natural part. So that's really great. The crown has this lace crown with permatease in it. And what permatease does, it's a teasing and it gives the crown that poof that I like. It also feels like it has some permatease around in the wefting. And I think that's to give it a full look. The nape in the back is an extended lace nape and it has these um, bra strap like uh, adjusters so you can make it smaller or bigger. This is an average size cap. I have a petite to average head. My circumference is 21 and a half inches. I always get the average cap and then adjust it. I haven't had any problems yet. I will let you know if I ever do with any of the wigs, but so far I haven't had a problem. The one issue about the lace nape for me is that it can be a little bit itchy. And also there are lace ear tabs. I really prefer when the wigs have a velvet ear tab and velvet nape. It's just more comfortable for me. But I got this on sale. I was really happy to find it and I am not unhappy with it at all. I really do like this wig. 
Okay, so when I get the wig out of the box, I shake it up, just get the hair off of the cap, get it moving like hair. Otherwise it can look like helmet head and that is not something we want. Now I'll show you what I do with a cap that does not have a lace front. And if you're not um, aware of what a lace front is, I will show it to you in other wigs, but what it is is there's a lace piece across here that's basically transparent and you stick it against your head and it looks like the hair is actually growing out from that lace piece or it actually looks like the hair is growing out from your head because they make it in such a way on the lace piece that it looks like it's coming out of your head. And you'll see that in some of the other wigs. So I, when I put this on, I do something a little bit differently because it doesn't have that. So all I have on is my wig grip. And what I do to put it on is I just take my hands on either side of the label and I put this front part right above my eyebrows at first and just slip it on over my head. Make sure my ear tabs are even. And then I'm just gonna pull my wig up to my hairline there. Okay, now let me see if I can get closer. Sorry about that, and show you here. So here's what the hairline looks like, which actually is not that bad. I don't really love this part here showing, but I could just pull some pieces out and style it. If I wanted to pull it back, you know, just pull some of the wig pieces out and make it look pretty natural, I think. But since I have my own hair right under there, what I like to do is I lift my wig up and I grab my own hair out from under my wig grip like that. Now, of course, my hair also matches the color of my wig. If your hair doesn't match the color, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Hopefully. And this that you're seeing there, that's the color of my wig grip. I have one with a lace part there. I just don't have it on right now. So that's not a defect in the wig. Okay, but here you can see now, that looks like my, well, it is my hair. So it makes it look like it's coming right out of my head. Also on the side, because this is my hair, if I put this behind my ear, It just looks that much more natural. Same with over here. It's coming out of the side of my head. So that's what I like to do if I don't have a lace front. And like I said, if you don't have hair there, you can just pull pieces of the wig down and make it look more natural. So when you get your wig, you wanna fluff it up, get the hairs off of. You don't want it to be like a helmet head stuck to your head. You know, play with it. Now this is not a heat friendly fiber. It You can't style it with a curling iron or a flat iron or a hair dryer. Um, if I wanna do anything, for example, with these bangs here that come down a lot, I would just heat up my hand and hold it. Just let the heat from my hand work on it. And there we go. I'll do that on this side too. And, you know, I just play with it until I got it the way I like it. And the other thing that I will use when I'm styling it is something called wig wax. I'll show it to you. It's called Tress Tech Wig Wax Spray. And so if I want something to stay back, like the bangs, for example, I will just spray it and put it in the place that I want it. 
I try not to use too much in the way of products because I don't want to have to wash my wigs too often. So only if I feel like I really need it. And with this wig wax, what I noticed is if you're combing or playing with your fingers, it seems to lose the hold. So you gotta just put it in and kind of leave it. So as far as styling this wig goes, when I had this hair, pretty much all I did was I would wear one side behind my ear. I always liked that look, or you could wear two sides, or if you like, you could put one side up like this. Something like that. Or so many options. I personally love Clarissa down. I really love this wig. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments below or send an email to my email address at frannysquare at gmail.com. I will put information on this wig, any products I use in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for joining me. I truly appreciate it. Remember to make it your own and I'll see you soon.